the big question is what can you tease for us for next season? Oh, a lot of things. A lot of new characters. A lot of new characters this year. Um, delving back into the canon and, 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 and creating two new original characters and two well-established characters that we will dig deep into the origins of. Um, uh, Hatter, and uh, we're, we're continuing uh, the, the growth and the uh, origins of Ivy, and um, uh, create a, a new villain who I can't say the name of now, um, that um, is 100% us, but so born from the uh, the primal ooze of, of DC. Uh, they're very happy with it. When you had uh, season two, it was like the, all about the villains and everything like that. Um, is there like a theme to season three? Season three, we discover and find out about and um, understand and see the origins of the Court of Owls. And um, their grip on Gotham and their power. Um, I know we teased that last season, but we really fall into that in the darkest way this year. And um, their assassin talent. You also bring in the Mad Hatter. Yes. Well, um, his origin story is, is very tied to his sister, actually. Uh, he was a character that never had an origin story. He was a character that never, you know, he kind of came and went out of the comic books very early on and then got left out um, later. Um, so that was really, you know, once we talked to DC, that was something we could really start from scratch. So that's very exciting and um, a wonderful actor playing him. And um, yeah, I mean, good stuff comes out of it. Well, Barnes is trying to, uh, uh, Jim Gordon's still refusing to uh, see himself as a police officer right now. He's uh, too much of last season damaged him, uh, physically, mentally, and um, he's finding the way to heal outside of the police department. He actually becomes a bounty hunter. But um, um, Barnes is holding the fort, and Bullock, thank you, becomes very... Um, instrumental in helping him um, then something will happen where Gordon can't deny his DNA anymore and you've got a cast that's uh, ranging in age from 15 to 71 which is unusual for a drama like this uh, who's 71 uh, John Doman Really? Well, he probably didn't want me to tell that. I'm going to call him up right now. <laughs> Don't. But, but are we going to see more of this where you have age groups coming in? I mean, that has to be hard to write for uh, in, in something like this. No, instance. you know what? The, the more variety, it makes it much easier to write for. Variety is like, you know, that's the, the, the medicine for everything. I mean, for the, the variety is what Gotham is about. Gotham is a, is, a, is a city, it's not a, it's not a, a town or a house, or, you know, it's a, a massive city and of course diversity in any which way, shape or form, whether, you know, race, age, gender, um, that's what makes it easy to write for. The fact that this place is complex and colourful and dangerous and beautiful and it's, yeah, it's never a problem. I, I, I really like that statistic, that's great. No, no, no. Last year was all about growth. Every character grew in their own way. Absolutely. Which character was your favorite to see grow? Well, I always have to say David. But, you know, Bruce Wayne, I mean, I'm really, really proud of uh, myself and the other writers for really showing so many sides to this character and how he struggles. Uh, and now, especially put up against a secret society who run the city, I mean, it's... How he navigates through that is quite, not only has he shown um, strength and he's shown integrity, he's going to show real, real wit and charm this year. Because for the first time this year, Bruce Wayne will have to take on another identity in order to survive. So now you get the spoiled rich kid brat, the, a disguise that he hides behind so people don't take him seriously.
when he, his agenda is actually very, very serious. So, and, and every time we throw difficult things at David, he kills it. I mean, every time. I mean, I mean it's like sometimes you go in there and go, it's pretty complex. And, you know, you remember he's a young teenager and you go, uh, and, and he just comes out with it. And you're like, yep, there it is. I mean, it's, it, he's incredible, the, the, the natural talent. Same with Cameron. It's kind of like she teaches us who the character is because she's infectious to be around. It's um, her energy. My kids are here right now. All they want to see is Cameron. Well, we we go into her backstory. I mean, that's funny because she's only a teenager, but uh, no, no, and she was very happy to hear it too. Her parents are not dead. And um, meeting them or meeting one of them will not be everything she wants it to be. It will at first, but it's like you build something up in your head and you fantasize about that thing and you make it a reality. And then when dealing with the reality, it's not what you wanted it to be. And it's, uh, it's, a very, it's gonna be, it's gonna propel her into her next, into her next um, identity. Yes, there is. <laughs> you know, the great thing about it is we have such a talented cast, but there's no, apart from Ben, who's done a lot of television before, there's nobody here who's a superstar. There's nobody, I mean, these guys were just all singing in the band, so there's nobody here who's a superstar. We picked the right actors for the right job, and they fit this family, they fit this troop of actors. This is like the RSC, and we're touring with a play. You have to get along and you have to gel with those other people, otherwise it doesn't work. So what, what we love about these people, everybody we cast is a great actor who's instantly accepted by these people. And like every team, the harder the competition, the better your game. So that, that's, that's our mantra. How about some of the interpersonal relationship dynamics for next season? Anything juicy? There's a couple of juicy ones, yeah. There's a couple of juicy ones. With um, with Penguin um, trying to dip in his hand in politics, dipping his foot in politics, uh, he's going to need help. And sometimes it takes a criminal to run a crime-driven city. So, so he's going to um, uh, get help from his buddy uh, in crime. Uh, and they make quite a duo, Penguin and Riddler. That is, and then of course, like every relationship, where two strong North magnets cover each other, they uh, friction grows and then becomes explosive. Cool. Good. How was working with Paul Rubens? How did that go? I was the one who really fought for that because I was the one in the room going like, I really want to meet, I, I, I love the idea of Penguin, of, of Robin finding a family that he had nothing about. And then I literally, I forget where I was, but I, I, I said it, I said Paul Rubin. And, it, and everyone just went, that was it. And then we started talking about Paul, 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 Paul. And then I was like, so somebody better call him. You know, because we were like, oh no, he'll do it. And then we were like, why, why would he do it? He's already done it. And I was like, oh man, I had to call him. And I, I thought, if he says no now, I don't think we're gonna do it. Because I, who's gonna, you can't, anyway, he was the best, the best. And he said to me at the end of it, I, was, I wrote the episode where he died. And he was preparing for that scene and he, he, he came over to me and I said, Dan, I, I just found out that Doctor Strange is bringing people back. <laughs> and I was wondering. So anyway, but he, he had the he had the greatest time. He really did. Again, he fit right into this troop of actors. He fit right in and was embraced immediately. I mean, one of the funniest guys, the most fun to deal with. He knew the character before we even talked about it because he had played him with Tim Burton. So, it was, it was really nice. It was, a, it was a joy. How difficult was it? Because it was bordering on a lot of comedy in that episode compared to a lot that we saw before. Yeah. Um, how difficult was it to straggle that line between comedy and really intense uh, I, It's funny, I have this conversation a lot as an English person who 
was in love with the British office and the American office. So it's very different in that Ricky Gervais doesn't need you to laugh at him. He actually needs you to accept him as David Brent, you know? And, um, and whereas Steve Carell is a very funny guy who's done a lot of comedy, wants to be funny, he wants you to find him funny. So the difference is if you ask people to find you funny and you keep performing for them, then you are making a comedy. When a person says, I'm not a character, this is me, and what I'm trying to do is be very serious, and it just happens to be funny, that's that's the comedy we understand on this show. And that's, there's nothing wrong with either comedies. Steve Carell, genius. David Brent, genius. Different ways of approaching comedy. You know, find me funny, make me fall over, laugh, all that, or go, I don't want you to laugh, stop. You know, um, I take myself very seriously. That's, that's what Paul Rubens did, you know. He was completely immersed in that character. It's just we put him in funny situations.